try. It's good. From Microbe TV, this is Q&A with A and V. I'm Vincent Racaniello, and joining me tonight from Chevy Chase, Maryland, Amy Rosenfeld. Hello, Amy. Hello, Vincent. How are you tonight? <clears throat> My voice is still raspy. I see. I see. But is it'll it, get better. Is it appealing raspy or nasty raspy? It's appealing <clears throat> raspy. So that, you know, you know, when I get sick, I sound like Lauren Bacall. I think she is was. That, is that uh, cashmere you're wearing, Amy? It is a cashmere blend. It's not a full sweater. It's just, oh. uh, it's just a long sleeve cashmere blended t-shirt. Oh, it's very nice. Ca well, cashmere is very nice. Even when it's blended, it's very nice. It's very soft. Well, and it's good is, color. Uh, this it's is very the, good um, color. Barb Mack in the UK is also wearing purple cashmere. Welcome, everybody. Really? <laughs> She's wearing purple cashmere? I need yes. purple cashmere. That's Definitely need says. purple cashmere. Oh, she just done me purple cashmere. Well, look, there's purple. someone here just from just south of Kaksaki, New York, Amy. That's very cool. You know, it was written up in the Times as a place to consider living. Coxsackie? Yes. Really? Yes. Oh, look, it's look, it's Laura. Two farms from San Francisco. I have to say, many people are happy to see you again, Amy. So welcome back, Amy. That's good. That's good. <laughs> the reincarnation of Q&A. It's not reincarnated. A and V. But, you know, did you notice I changed the fonts on the, um, on the thumbnail? Yes, I noticed. Because I didn't like the ampersand on the other font, so I changed the whole font. I see. Welcome, so everybody. So announce your big news. <clears throat> Hang on, I, news. Want to, I want to thank some people first. Let's thank our moderators for tonight. We have Barb Mack, and we have a new moderator, Andrew, from New Zealand. Welcome, Andrew. That's very we cool. Peak Dunning Kruger is here. I saw Frank as well, and Vanity Nutrition, welcome all of you to the reincarnation of Q and A with A and V. Reincarnation <laughs> sounds like it died. I didn't die. All right, sorry, my apologies. What would you call it, Doctor Rosenfeld? I have stuff to do. I'm a busy person. I have okay. busy, busy, busy. Many people are glad you're back, so uh, I'm glad yeah, you're back it's good. too. Um, it's good. All right, what, where's the what big is news? My, what's the big the announcement? Big Come on, you got to do the big news. You were supposed to create a list. Well, I didn't create a list. So you have no idea how many tickets remain? No, I don't. I have no idea. <sighs> Amy's, well, talking about Twiv. Amy's talking about TWIV 1000 where... Yeah, it's big news. After party and everything on Saturday night. It's a hot yeah. ticket. Yeah. April 15th. Be hip, or be, be hip or be square. Rented out a theater, the Helen Mills Theater in New York City, which is just a few blocks from the incubator. And um, it's a, it it's only seats 130 people, but I think that's Just because fine. you don't get a ticket doesn't mean you can't come and enjoy the party afterwards. That's what the after party is for. So uh, I will make a list and see how many people we have on the list so far. Um, and then maybe next week I will announce if there's spots left. How's that? Does that sound like a plan, Dr. Rosenfeld? Sure. It's a plan, Stan. Your wall light looks good tonight. It's very nicely lit, the uh, Keith Haring poster. It's just a lamp. All right, so let's start with our questions since uh, Amy is here to answer them. And the first one is right up your alley, Amy. Are you ready? I'm holding on to my seat. Are rhinos and coronas closely related? Not at all. Totally not at all. Totally Dif different. Different families, Totally right? different. Totally different. Hugely different. Are they Can't different, explain. Amy? Are they different? No. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yes. They are so super different. Besides the genome, so just how's, even, the no, how's the morphology? I mean, how's even, the morphology? So coronas are enveloped and they have spikes and M and, and E and M in the membrane. 
And rhinos are icosahedral uh, non-enveloped capsid proteins. They're so much similar to polio. As you show your little polio with the with the receptor bound to it. Well, that's at the incubator now. I don't have it anymore, but I got something else. So we have we have a polio with just one receptor. How's that? It's cute. It's good teaching. And then we have the corona. This is not the scale because coronas are bigger than picornas. Oh, yeah. But so you can see yeah. the spikes. Yeah, it is. and it's enveloped. And the genome is almost twice the size. Is this and is this? it's capped, which the five prime end of polio is not. And uh, it has, you know, proofreading activities and accessory proteins and stuff. And picornas are very sparse. They're austere in the virus family. Not as austere as others, like what, SV40 has two proteins, large T, small T. So if you made antibodies to a coronavirus, would they cross-react with rhinoviruses? There's the potential that they could. So like the woman who's down the hall, who I who's going to help me with LibreSeq, she mm -hmm. has a paper in Cell Reports where she isolated antibodies from uh, a person who had, HIV, who had a co-infection of HIV and HCV, and she has antibodies that bind both. Oh. All right. Next question. What do you think of that one? That's unexpected. I don't know how you can. How would you separate the two antibodies? So she has HCV. No, she has antibody. She there are antibodies that cross react and neutralize both HCV and HIV. She has like five antibodies that do that. Okay. That's surprising to me. Isn't it surprising to you? Yeah, I think it's very surprising. But then when I think about the immune system and the diversity and stuff, I'm sure that there has to be something that is similar enough to get a binding antibody yep. and neutralizing antibody. It's just that we've never thought about it. Or yeah, we've never opened our minds to that potential. I, w I will point out that Amy opened our minds to the potential of cross-reacting antibodies among enteroviruses. That's true. It's my big work. And that We're moving she's forward. Continue, she's continuing with that at the FDA and is influencing many other people into rethinking their approaches. Yeah. I mean, now there's antibodies that cross react with RSV and human uh, metanemonia virus. It's Nature Communication paper two weeks ago. Yeah. Those, that's, a, that's a paper you sent. I was thinking of doing it. It's a really amazing paper. It will yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, we have a question here from Polio Pete. Where are my cookies, Polio Pete? <laughs> you think often, Daniel, recommend the bivalent for vulnerable persons because of transient protection for a few months or because cellular immunity could be enhanced? Transient protection for a few months. Totally agree. Totally agree. We're off to a good foot here, uh, Dr. Rosenfeld. I know, but if only Pete coughed up the little pine nut cookies, I'm it'd sure be even will. better. Yeah, so you get a couple of months protection. But the thing is, Amy, what do you think is the SARS-CoV-2 season? Do you really think it's a winter infection? Yeah, so, yeah I do. You do? But it's yeah. infecting right now all year round, no? Well, of course it's going to affect all year round when you have a huge population of naive people, but eventually it will have a seasonality that will just be winter. Okay. Got it. That is the that is the respiratory season. So Polio wants to know about a Denmark study which showed that nine percent of mRNA recipients still had RNA in their blood after twenty eight days. Have you seen this study? No. It's uh, I presume it's mRNA COVID vaccines, right? I would assume so. And what difference does it make if it has chopped up pieces of RNA in their blood for 28 days? You have chopped up pieces of RNA in your blood probably from dead cells that exploded. So I don't really understand. Yeah, I'm sure they're chopped up because they did PCR, yeah? Okay, well, I don't get it. Well, it's just to scare people, right? I thought he was a nurse. Oh, he's not acting like a nurse, right? 
Oh, well, then his license should be revoked. Here's Laura. Yeah, it's Laura. I know, and there was Kip too. He, he's been talking about, he's been reading editorials in the Times about masking and then debunk the funk and some other stuff. Yeah. Does one get any kind of immunity after norovirus infection? Yeah, you get immunity after norovirus infection. But you can it's get just not long lived. Yeah, you can get reinfected multiple times, right? Yes, it's not long lived because I don't think that there's a. I'm not sure that there's a very mix phase to the virus. I don't think that there's a very mix phase to no, norovirus. No. Therefore, not. yeah. Therefore, it's transient. It's probably six months at best. Unfortunately, it's a very, it's the outbreak is atrocious right now and it's a very yucky disease, very yucky. And it goes to tell you, we need to wash our hands. What are you writing down? Oh, um, the next email is, is a contribution here uh, from uh, Rima. He sent a contribution to um, uh, my Venmo, our Venmo account. That's uh, lovely and lovely. He, he asked me if I got it. Uh, ah. Let's see. Did, did I have it? Do I have it? Rima. Here we go. Rima. Yeah, I see. Oh, what a cutie. Thank you, Rima, for your contribution to science communication. And uh, he his icon is a um, picture Isn't of that his a niece. Cat? What's that? No, oh, not it's that. A cat. No, the, the, the Venmo icon <laughs> is a picture of his, nie his ah. nephew. Niece, his niece, no, Rima niece. Jr. Niece, Rima Jr. Thank you very much, Rima. It's very kind of you to support it's our lovely. work. If anyone it's else lovely. wants to contribute to Venmo, uh, it's at microbe.tv. Should I put it on the... Uh, yeah, put thing? it up on top and make it big so people can see. So Venmo I don't need is to see it. at microbe TV. We'll put it I don't up know. Above. Now you just got me. Okay. Now it's. Put it up there. Okay. How's that? Okay. Thank you, Rima. If anyone else wants to do that, I think they take less percentage than YouTube does, but they do take a percentage. Everybody takes a percent. I did receive it. Uh, thank you so much. It's very uh, lovely. <clears throat> did we make our Paxlovid PSA? Yeah, you did. Yeah, last, last Thursday. We spent a couple of hours, and I don't know when it's coming out, but we did the first part. There are going to be three, and we did the first part, so yes. So you That's, need three for three different audiences? Uh, no, it's just, just a lot of information, apparently. Yeah. Uh, will Amy have any new papers to share this week? Yeah, she did, plenty, but I didn't uh, prepare any because I thought since... It's her grand reappearance that we would just focus on Amy. You don't need to focus on me. We could have talked the, about the bat. We could have talked about the bat cells, which had okay, potential could, to be cool, I but maybe up. not. Um, Who knows? Where's the East End? Where's the East End in New York City, uh, Amy? The East End in yeah. New York is all the way on the east side at the Bayou Bata. Or it could be in East End, Long Island. No, well, it's somewhere in the city. Mark will tell us where the East End is. It's all the way at the bottom on the very east side. Oh, thank you, Judy. <laughs> now we got another Venmo. <laughs> this comes from Judy. Thank you so that's much. Very, for your, that's very. That's great. For your contribution. So I. It's a. They take. Um, no, according to Quistella, Venmo should not take any percent. That's what she said. Well, they took 1.9% uh, plus 10 cents. East End Avenue is the East End. You know where East End Avenue is, right? It's somewhere on the yeah. East End. Yeah. It's, it's, it's like by the UN, all the way over there. Like, okay. It's right. It's been, so it's south of, I think it's south of York, and I think York comes off of it, like, you know, yeah. by Rockefeller. Or maybe East End is behind Rockefeller. Oh, actually, and Markle says East End of Long Island. Ah, so when I said East End of Long Island. Because I know there's an East End Avenue also. Sometimes you got, you just. Ah. 
I know you're right. You're weeks. right about. Yeah, we have they go away for six weeks, and you know whatever. New, New York issues. You're always on. I know. I know. When is the next COVID booster coming out? I have no idea. I don't think anything's coming out until they they come up with uh, the schedule. Right? Isn't that what the Verback meeting was all about last month? Was coming up with a schedule? Yeah, I mean they 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 discussed having a schedule, but they didn't finalize it. So I don't know. Well, I they... guess they'll have another meeting. They have a schedule, and then they'll come. Then they'll decide if yeah. they need. But then they'll decide if they need. Yep. Rima says talking about deer in the in several episodes. Rima means white deer jumping on snowy mountains. Cool. Wow, that's a short name for a long sentence. <laughs> Okie dokie, Australia has pulled the plug and will not be reporting any new COVID cases. A bit concerned as we're still getting deaths. Sadly, young children and vulnerable aged are still dying. Get vaccinated. Yes, hopefully they are not unvaccinated. They may be. I remember also vulnerable people need boosters for three months of protection, right? Yeah. Sometimes you don't know. Sometimes you don't know who was vulnerable, though, right? Sometimes. When in doubt, err on the side of caution. What's this county named after Amy? What is that? Did, anyone, did you see? Did you see it? Uh, someone, someone repeat it. What is the? Uh, I don't know. East End starts. East End Avenue starts at 79th and runs up to 90th. It's like between yeah. York and FDR Drive, then. Exactly. That's from Nevitz Forever. Thank you very cool. much for that. Cool. Um, oh, and only one case had the full mRNA, and at five days, does that matter? So this is the Danish study. So only one of those patients had the full mRNA at five days and not beyond. So that's a meaningless study, as Amy said. Doesn't mean anything. <clears throat> Looking forward to hearing about any La Amy Lab updates. Have any updates? Uh, How's the lab going? Uh, hmm. I know you're working hard because every time I talk to you, you're there. Yes, I'm working hard. I got some interesting projects. I got a lot of mice. Uh, I have a lot of plaques. Yeah. Got a lot of talks. All right. All right. And maybe Strauss and I will, we need to get together and talk about putting it, some of it all together to send off the first manuscript this spring. I just want you to see, I'm looking forward to listening to Amy this week. I'm so excited to see Amy back. So I just want to know that you are appreciated. It's good. Yes, it's unfortunate that there are trolling moderators and, and stuff. So. Is there anything you miss about working in Vincent's lab? I can just say that. No, she doesn't miss anything. <laughs> okay, good to know that that was my answer. I'm not sure that that was the answer I was going with, but hey, if you want to take the question, be my guest. So, sad. Amy, what did you have for dinner tonight? How's it going? When do you think you're going to get a haircut? Well, me? You're going to get a haircut? No, you can answer it on yourself. I was just joking. <laughs> I know. What do you miss about working in the lab? The arguments we had every day? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, we didn't have arguments every day. We had That's lively true. discussions. Yeah. I have to walk all the way down the hall, and now my guy might be leaving. That's so, so there's good. a guy down the hall you like to talk to, right? Yeah, we, we, talk, we chat, and then there's a girl I go walking with. And I tell her stories about Andrew and his kids, like when Patrick was eight and downloaded porn on all the school library computers. And Andrew got called into the you know, principal's office. And they mm -hmm. said, are you Patrick's dad? And he said, yes. And they said, Patrick, would you like to tell your dad why you're here? And Patrick said, 
Well, I was doing exactly what dad does on Sunday morning, downloading porn. <laughs> <laughs> but what does it have to do with missing my lab? I don't get, I don't get that part. I, I, it has to do with the fact that I have to go walk around. You're not around to chat with. Oh, my well, God. Good. good to be missed. Yeah. So Eleanor was going to come to the incubator this week, but I couldn't make it. And she's going to eat the pinolis she had bought. Are you sure you need to eat those? Why don't you just save them? I guess they'll get stale, right? Why? You just get a latte and you dunk them. Plus, in Veneros, they have my favorite biscotti, too. You know Veneros? Yeah, it's on 11th and 1st Avenue. Yeah, it's really old. It was actually written up in the New York Times for how old it is and stuff. As long as well as Ferraro's in Little Italy. But I like Veneros better. But they have my one of my favorite biscotti there. I've never heard of it. Actually, that's not true. I used to get you cannolis from there. Hmm. Okay. Well, then I've forgotten, right? Yeah, you've forgotten. Yeah. Also, more on this Danish study. The twin, the one twenty-eight day case had only a few fragments, a very low read number, so it was very low. What is very low? Is it in the garbage can of the sequencer? No, you no seriously. You when you see, when you do next generation sequencing, anything that has less than like a thousand reads goes into the garbage can. And so then Campbell extrapolated the nine point three percent to the entire vaccinated population, which is bogus because, as we see, there are all kinds of issues with this. So this is what uh, the man does, and why no one should listen or watch. Yet he has millions of subs and we have only 117,000. And that's the way the world works, right, Amy? Uh, well, it's not ideal. Apollo Pete he keeps hearing that masks don't work. Well, I live with someone who had COVID and visited a COVID floor in the hospital for a week more an N95, never was infected. That's my study. Well, you don't, you didn't get sick. You don't know if you weren't infected, right? You didn't test yourself every day, or maybe you did. I don't know. <laughs> uh, when will the Paxlovid PSA be available? Soon. And in the next probably two weeks. And it's good. You're gonna so like what do it. they have? To, what do they have to do? They have to edit. What do um, they have to do? Yeah, they have to edit, but. That doesn't take weeks, okay? That should take one day to edit and put it all together, even if they decide to release the video. There's video? I thought yeah, that, we, that it was only audio. You told me only audio. There's well, video? They recorded the video because we both have good video setups, and they just said they may use it. So we made sure we looked oh. at the camera like this all the time when we were talking, you know? <laughs> Yes, I see. Very natural. <laughs> um, so th they're trying to time it with the, with the approval of the drug, right? I don't know. I'm not part well, of I'm it. I'm telling you, the drug is under EUA at the moment, and it's going to receive licensure very soon, apparently, and they want to time it. So that's all I know. That's when okay. you hear... I'm still on their video. You're, you're still on the video, I know. Yeah, I'm still on the video. And how is the script? Are you ad-libbed? Well, they gave us a script, and I said, why don't you let us wing it? And they did, and they loved it. <laughs> ah. But um, I, it was fine. We did a good job, I thought. They liked it. So. I'm sure it's And we have two more uh, episodes to record. There's going to be two more video episodes. Oh. Uh, um, but they wanted to get that one done quickly, so I did it with Daniel last week, last Thursday. There you go. Okay. Okay. Um, polio, Pete Campbell also implied human cells had its own RDRP to copy the mRNA. It's well, not that Vincent would spit blood. It's just he obviously does not know any biology because no human cell has any RNA-dependent RNA polymerase. That's the RNA. De that's the only polymerase that is. That's one of the two polymerases basically that's missing. 
We do have reverse transcriptase though, right? Very low levels, very yes, low, low, very That's low. True. I mean, it's like minuscule, you sneeze and it's gone. And really mostly when you think of our cells, you think of DNA dependent DNA polymerases and DNA dependent RNA polymerases. So to say that, that a human cell has its own RNA dependent RNA polymerase, the man needs to go off the YouTube. Off the YouTube. Well, the more fake stuff you say, the more followers you get, apparently. Really? Okay, well, then we have billions of dollars. And I never have to work another day in my I'm life. I'm not going to say, I'm not going to ever say fake stuff, okay? I don't want to. It's against I was my... being facetious. No, no, I know sarcastic. you are. I know you are. Okay. I, I do not ever want to willfully distribute fake stuff. Now, maybe he just doesn't know any better. It's possible. But why would you listen to really? someone who doesn't know how any did, better? How did take basic biology. That's like bio 101. Yeah, but you forget it after so many years. You know, if you don't use it, you know what happens. All right. Well, then he shouldn't be spewing <clears throat> out anything. Midge is ha very nice. Midge is happy to see you, Amy. Hello, okay. Midge. And Do Peak, we know, Peak, Peak is ex I think Midge is in Australia, if I remember her last letter. That's yeah. great. And well, um, Midge. And um, I think uh, here, I want to show Pete, Peak being excited. You Q&A. <laughs> I like that. That's yeah, cool. All right, here's Kip. Yeah. Regardless of our oral hygiene, our mouths are a jungle of bacteria. Upon exhalation, the droplets are full of oral flora, which deposit on the inside of our mask and with time get stinky. <laughs> this is a scientific term, stinky. <laughs> well, right? it goes right up there with yuck and ick. Yeah. Yes. Um, yeah, but the next day when you take the mask off the next day it's usually okay right amy it doesn't smell the next day yeah not so bad all right all right billy bob is, is great to see amy andrew nice great to, to see, see amy hi amy from amy looks pale no that's not good uh cashmere <laughs> so yes, you look cashmere. always cashmere, cashmere everybody's today. everybody is commenting on your cashmere or purple what is it a blend right it's a cashmere blend <clears throat> so brian says hello from montreal still the best bagels so where is he going is he going to st vintners or the fairmont because they're like right across the street from each other on uh what is it it's this famous street like it goes north to south and it, <laughs> i forgot what it's called by now you know all I, these things about cities where you've lived. Why is that? I spend a lot of time walking around. Oh, you see, that's what I don't do. I don't walk around. I just go to my workplace and hang out there, right? Yeah, but I spend a lot of time walking around. St. Denis Street. St. Denis. That's right. So you take St. Denis from Sherbrooke North and you go to the Plateau. And there's a famous... Uh, dive diner on like the corner of St. Denis and some place. And then, you know, you go further up and I think it's like the Plateau and then the Ochema. And that's where the two bagel places are across the street from each other. But you can't forget that you have to go to the smoked meat place first. That's right beforehand. All right. And you know what smoked meat is, right? Yeah. She, Nancy says Rue Saint Denis. Yeah, Rue Saint Denis. You know what smoked meat is, right? Uh, Brian said he got his bagels from St. Viateur on St. Viateur near Park. Yeah. Yeah. The Fairmont and St. Viateur. It's a big bagel rifle, right? But, so, you know, you, you know. <laughs> you know what's and funny? They're sweeter than New York bagels, well, but they're I, also I, sometimes airier. They're so less the light. They're lighter, and they're never over doughy, like a roll with a hole. You know, lots of times you get bagels in New York. It's wrong. Not good. Not so good. Alice uh, from Ireland have missed you. Hope you're doing good things and making time for you time. I don't have you time. <laughs> Question. Did anyone read today's opinion piece in the New York Times on mask mandates? Not yet. Not sure. Brett Stephen has the expertise to write such a piece, in my opinion. Oh, that never stopped anyone from writing opinion pieces did it amy 
Nope. It's unfortunate. No editing. Uh, um, here's a good one from Peter. The authors of the paper, Campbell Red, in quotes, concluded it should be emphasized that our data does not in any way change the conclusion that both mRNA vaccines are safe and effective. I think that's the right statement, don't you, Amy? Yes. Julie is glad you're back. So he's the former editor of the Jerusalem Post and a comment and one of Pulitzer for commentary in the Wall Street Journal. And so clearly he's a scientist. <laughs> well, I did not know that I've been wasting my time. Well, you know, it's called op-ed. You can have an opinion, right? Yes, you can have an opinion. Yeah, but people shouldn't but necessarily don't you think listen you to should, you. Right, but don't you think you should stay in your own lane? No, oh, people don't do that. You know that. Yeah, I know. I had to. I had to control myself from telling somebody to stay in their own lane when they were talking about AI. Yeah, like, Millie is okay, very happy up? to see you. Millie is very happy yeah. to see you. Very nice to see Millie. Uh, the prion paper disturbed G Ferraro. Oh, that's not good. Did you Did you see that one? I don't know which one. Here it is. Um, canine detection of chronic wasting disease in laboratory and field settings. So uh, dogs found eight out of 11. So they, these dogs were trained to differentiate between positive and negative white-tailed deer feces. And then ah. they went out in the field and they could find them. So this says, this suggests that dogs can be trained to differentiate feces in laboratory and field settings. Okay. Now, why would it disturb you? Are you afraid the dogs are going to eat the feces, um, G? Just probably the, um, the potential of wasting disease coming to our deer population, yeah. which is what is anticipated. But I think they just want to use the dogs for, for screening, right? Screening purposes? Yeah, it's like drug screening at the airport. You have dogs that sense luggage that yeah. they use to sniff around luggage to see drugs, yeah. And they also can sniff out COVID-positive people, right? Sure. <laughs> you don't believe it? Sure. Hello, Amy. Well, welcome back. What do you think of the old practice of challenging mucosal immunity with bacterial extracts to prevent respiratory infections? <laughs> What is that to stimulate the innate immune response? I guess it would, right? Yeah, that's what it sounds like. But I'm, I'm not sure it's a good idea. Not my favorite. I don't think it's a good idea. Not my favorite. Monica is so glad Amy is with you tonight. Welcome back, Amy. It's so good. It's great. So MN loves the blue glasses, the green shirt, and the purple cashmere. Actually, this is a good combo, you know, that we yeah, have. I do. Here. We didn't even. You know, it's it. the new it's the new M and M combo. They released purple M and Ms just for like females, especially after there was the big stink about whether or not the M and M should be in heels or in sneakers. So then they made purple M and Ms. I think I things I purple, know. I, I should have purple <laughs> glasses. That would go best if I had purple glasses, right? No, the blue is good. Too much purple, not so good. The blue is good. Where will the after party be? At the incubator. Yeah, we're going to have it at the incubator, although I'm a little worried because we can't put 130 people in. But Amy says not everybody will go. So. Not everybody will stay for long periods of time either. People come and go at different times. It's great to see Amy again. It's lovely to see Elise. So nice to see Q&A again. Um, so we have 360 of you. That's great. And only 174 likes. Could you please hit the like button? Uh, why, why do we want you to hit the like button? Because that attracts other people. When something gets liked a lot, it's, it's likely to be recommended to others. So please do that. We would love that. Mm. Coralie said, I meant death from COVID which has started to rise. Yes, 
I understood that. Um, that's what happens when infections go up. You get more deaths, right, Amy? Sometimes, yeah. But even if everyone is vaccinated, there will still be some deaths because not everyone will be protected, right? Right. From severe disease. It's not 100%. No. Any new medications, vaccines for viruses? I don't know, I don't know what, you, what you would like to know. We've, <laughs> we've released a bunch of new vaccines and, and antivirals in the past two years, right? Is yeah. it? And, and they're always in development. So uh, I, today, I don't know of I don't know of any new ones today that I heard of. Have you heard of any new vaccines or antivirals today? Ah. I have not. Nope. Okay. Rima wants to know how is it going with driving? Have you found a place close to work? I live in the same place that I lived in in June. Driving, driving still is not good. Don't like driving. I mean, is she's never going to like driving. She hates it, even though, she, you know, you, you should never say you hate driving in front of your car. My vehicle? But, you mean the vehicle? The vehicle, yeah. The vehicle? The vehicle knows that I like it to as much as you can like a vehicle, which is, like, not very much because I don't like driving. But if somebody else wants to drive the vehicle and just chauffeur me around, then I would love the vehicle. Raphael says, feels like H5 is not going to be a pandemic because pandemics are like car accidents. When you're looking, it won't happen. <laughs> At least I hope so. That's an interesting perspective, I think. <laughs> when you're looking, it won't happen. That is true. And we are looking. It is not, at, uh, I it don't is think not a gonna, pandemic. I don't think we're going to have a H5 pandemic, but we'll see. We've well, been it's a pandemic for the poor chickens. And the waterfowl. Yeah, it is. Unfortunately. Good. Not good for them. And the turkeys. Not good for them. So uh, Kip says, in response to the Times opinion piece I'm asking, I circulate the recent debunk the funk. Yes, mask still works. It's spot on. Yes, it's very good. Yes. Yes. I told Masks you, still work. They haven't stopped working. Well, why would they stop working? <laughs> I don't understand. All right, virology so, uh, professor, does the Hep B variant contain a cellular kinase? Uh, there is an old paper that says that, yes. I'm looking at it now. It's a 1980 paper. But you know, protein kinase activity in hepatitis B, bi B virus by Bill Robinson, who was a, a very good hepatitis B virus researcher. Well, there um, you have it. So the problem is that it could be contaminant, right? May not be yes. something needed. And I don't know anything more. More than that, yeah. Does your vehicle have a name, Amy? That's <laughs> called the vehicle. <laughs> it's called the vehicle. Well, it's just the vehicle, right? <laughs> it's the vehicle. <laughs> Yes, it's called the vehicle. Amy, do you have any thoughts on the RSV vaccine? Which one? <laughs> any of them. Just <laughs> pick one. <laughs> well, the old one was a disaster and a half. But it's the one in the Very 60s. Was, yeah, so that the, was horrible. Yeah, it was a, that was a disaster. But what, an mRNA two, one was recently there tested, are two right? That, uh, well, there are three. Two of them look good from their press release, their data. In stuff, and the third one from the company's press release sounds like a joke. We stopped. We had an eighty-six percent reduction of coughing. What a joke! They're not all mRNA vaccines, correct? I think that they are, actually. Because when when Ellen and I did a TWIV in uh, Nova Scotia, we had a lady. That was years ago. Yeah, it was five years ago. She was working on a an RSV vaccine, which would be given to uh, pregnant mothers, and then the, the antibodies would protect the babies. And I don't remember what that kind... It was not obviously an mRNA vaccine. It was something else, but oh, that's really? still that's still a thing also, yeah. Let's look it up. Uh, 
Pfizer says their RSV vaccine could receive FDA approval this summer. Yeah, so I think it's, a, it's an mRNA vaccine. I think it's a maternal. Yeah, yeah it's a maternal well, I think vaccine. That the whole thing, I think that that's the latest rage is to give it as a, as a third trimester vaccine to protect the, the baby at very early times because that's when the kids develop RSV was in, within six months of life. After six months, you don't really see that much RSV. I think. So apparently a couple of uh, vaccines are going to be approved by the FDA in the coming year, one from Pfizer, another from GlaxoSmithKline, which are from people, those are from old, for old people. And there's some monoclonals. Yeah. But I don't, but the, the third return. company was a joke. Barney Graham says this is the beginning of a new era. Uh, I don't know about that. He said, I think all the vaccines are going to work well enough to be approved. I don't know about that. We published an editorial. And publish uh, whatever he wants as a retired professor. I think he's at Morehouse, right? He's at Morehouse. He's a consultant in global health equity. Well, how's that going? Because it doesn't I'm seem sure to he's... be going. I want to well. get him on. I have to get him on Twitter. I, I would love to hear his about his career. Yeah, it would be good. I don't have my notes here, so I can't write it down. All right. Are, are there any known beneficial viruses that would be helpful? for those that aren't infected with them yet. The last part of the question I don't like. I like the first part. Are there, are there any known beneficial viruses? But then I don't understand that would be helpful for those who aren't infected with them. I don't know. So maybe he's thinking that we can make a very own, like a microbiome tra fecal transplant. Exactly. I suspect there probably are. I mean, I don't know what your thought is on this, Amy. I mean, I think there are some beneficial human viruses, but we just haven't shown it. Yeah, I think that that's true. Because it's hard to do. It's hard to do, but you can just look at the remnants of some of the old ret retroviruses, like, what is it, syncytium for having a productive placenta? Right, so you're talking about genes taken from uh, old retrovirus infections. Well, right? they're not taken, they're left behind. <laughs> well, they're repurposed, right? I don't know if they're repurposed. I mean, I don't know what the original purpose was. Uh, the original purpose was had no purpose. It was just part of the infection, right? A virus infected people were actually... Right, for but the maybe it was to cause... Not... Some... It wasn't people. Maybe it was it was... Go ahead. Sorry. No, go ahead. The original infection was in ancient mammals who didn't have placentas, right? And then they developed a placental by taking the, the spike, the envelope gene from the virus. Yeah, I don't think it's a spike. Yeah, it's a spike. It's, it's, yeah. a, it's a repurposed uh, spike from the retrovirus. It, well, I don't think that they call envelope spike. No, um, they call it envelope. You're right. I um, don't think it's spike. But it could be to have fused so, original. It could have been in the pathway to have made multicellular organisms. From how to fuse one cell to the next, so you could have multicellular organisms. Well, that would be even older than the placenta, though. They, these were you know, pre-placental mammals. So they're already complex organisms. They got infected. By right. But it virus. could have just been, it could have been, it could have been in that line of something that could have allowed you to have multicellular organisms. You can't could rule be. it out. Sure. Could be. Could be. David Sky says. Said, so, so Peter says, polio Pete says, if diapers work, masks work. <laughs> I don't really know that I want to think I have a diaper on my face. All right. Amy is back. Glad yes. Amy is back. I'm going to highlight all yeah. of these. It's very nice. Carol says, um, now if I remember, Carol is our resident nephrologist. Oh, she's a kidney person. She answered the question, I think it was last week, 
could you get multiple courses of remdesivir if he had multiple infections? And she said, yes, she has kidney transplant patients who they give multiple courses of remdesivir to. It's not a problem. Okay. Very nice. Anyway, she says the deer to, uh, is there a problem? Is there a worry about SARS-CoV-2 going from deer to humans? Hasn't done that yet. Yeah, so this one paper out of Canada, there's one ex example of a human uh, who got infected with a virus whose genome looks like that from a, a deer, but it's only one out of you know, many, many, so I'm not sure that it's happening regularly. You should take precautions for living near deer because of the ticks and the Lyme disease, according to the woman I heard speak yet on Monday, that you should she, have on Twitter. What did she say? So she says that the deer, especially the female deer, come right up to your house and everything, and they bring the ticks, and the ticks, um, that it increases your chance of getting Lyme disease and stuff. And so she says that you need, we need deer control and stuff, and we need to think about it prudently as well as tick control. She has these tick so, tubes. So when in it with, with uh, cotton in it with, uh, what do they put it? Tick aside ivermectin, right? No, they don't use ivermectin. It's something else. So when I come home, there are deer about 10 feet away from me. I get out of my car and they just sit there. They're not going to get ticks on me, right? <laughs> 10 feet away. No, your grass is full of ticks. And I don't walk on my grass. Your grass is full of ticks. Mm, so it's yeah. also, it's mostly, it's really the, sm it's really the small rodents too. So the tick tubes are for the small rodents, not for the deer. And you have and to do it for like two or three years. And dogs You should have get, her on. The dogs can get these ticks also. Yeah. See, I'm, why, I'm don't you, why don't you use flea and tick powder for your dogs? That's I'm what sure frontline sure. is. Yeah, I'm sure they do get tick aside. They, they get it on the back of their neck periodically. Well, you give it, and then it goes in through the skin, and then it's a slow release for, like, months. Fisher wants to know where I think SARS-CoV-2 came from. Came from... Bats? Bats originally, which probably infected some animals that were then brought into the uh, market in Wuhan, the outdoor market, and from there they, they infected people. Because the data that we have from Bill Warraby and others show that that was the... Uh, Mike Warraby. Michael, what did I say? Bill. <laughs> I don't know why I said that. This, the epicenter was the this outdoor market, so I think it's quite clear that's where it started. But, you know, we had... Very similar viruses have been found in bats elsewhere, but... Laos and Vietnam and Thailand and other places in China, but you know the the ancestor we don't have. I'm not sure we'll ever have it. Here's one for you, Amy. Does polio genome remain circularized during the process of replication, or is it only circularized during initiation? Initiation of what translation? So the polio genome, it does not remain circularized during RNA copying. Just for initiation of RNA synthesis, right? For translation, it's supposedly circularized by PD, by PPP binding right. to um, parts of 4G. But when you talk about RNA replication cycle, the Cree is in the middle and it folds back on itself in order to prime. It's exactly the element. And then you prime with VDP, with VPG and your adulation at the three prime end. So it's not, it's more like a lariat, I think is what Raul and Barton think. It's more like a lariat structure, not a circle as it is for translation. Don't really know the details, right? Those are all in vitro experiments. We have no idea what's happening in cells. It's by your buddy Andino. He did it in xenopus cells or xenopus yeah. extracts and stuff. Yep. Do 
do we think cross-reactivity is something that's happening randomly or is it some artifact of viral and immune evolution? I don't like the term artifact. I don't think it's random. I think it's related to the epitope structure, don't you? Yes. It's related to the epitope structure. And I don't think it's an artifact. I think it is related to, you know, you have an epitope in one virus that gives rise to antibodies that cross-react with a different virus. The epitopes are somehow related. Right. And you probably have more of those as you go through hypersomatic mutation. And he's working on this question, right? Yes, I am. You're going to so have painted answer. wink, yeah. Painted wink asks, so why am I paying four to six dollars per dozen of eggs because of avian flu? And yes, you are paying six dollars for a dozen eggs because of avian flu. But I I paid twelve dollars for a baguette, and that has nothing to do with eggs. I don't know why you paid twelve dollars for a baguette. Are you sure you paid twelve dollars? I was told that it cost twelve dollars. By whom? The cashier. Okay, never mind. Bill Maher on his show last Friday did a terrible injustice to the natural immunity findings. He made it sound like your own immune system is as good fighting off the virus versus vaccination. Well, so your immune system is probably somewhat better at fighting off the virus than vaccination, but vaccination gives you a head start. Yeah, well, you don't die from vaccination either, right? Because it gave you a head start. Yeah, the, 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 if, if you don't- You're you able vaccinate. to overcome whatever, you're able to overcome whatever deficiencies you may have, right? Exactly. Because you're given a head start. So I don't really, I don't really, I, I don't think like he should be coming out of his lane. He's a comic. Right. Maybe he was making a joke. I don't know, but would he like me to come on his show and be a comic? And I think you would be then, pretty funny, but he would not I like you to, to compete. Go on TV. I yeah, don't you need do to need go on. you do need to go on TV. No, You're I the don't. next Joan Rivers. <laughs> no, <laughs> I'm not. You're funny. <laughs> Are any of the childhood vaccines besides measles considered sterilizing? Is there any chance at all of developing a sterilized vaccine for SARS-CoV-2? Nothing ahead, is Amy. sterilizing. Nothing is sterilizing. There is no potential chance of developing a sterilizing immune vaccine. And steril there's no such thing as sterilizing immunity. I don't like the term. It's a bad term. Not good. Right. You just don't know that you, you just don't develop disease. Uh, and I don't think we could develop one for SARS-CoV-2. So as as Paul Office says, stop trying to prevent infection. It's not good policy. No, the truth of the matter is, is no vaccine prevents infection. Mm -hmm. uh, we are on so, the same page. I don't know why you would think that w this one would ever do that. That's nope. not great. All right, back to not polio, Pete. Campbell again referenced a study which showed that damage to the brain and heart was caused by the vaccine, not the virus, because researchers only found spike in those areas. Uh, th this isn't right either. <laughs> vaccine uh, is not associated with uh, brain damage, but some of the myocarditis might be for for the. But it's uh, transient. It's, it's transient. Generally. That's correct. Very transient. And if we talk to our friend, I'm sure he would tell everybody to get vaccinated. Just get vaccinated, yeah. I'm sure our friend with the heart problem would tell everybody to get vaccinated because his heart problem is not good. Not good at all. Simon says, I thought other respiratory viruses also infect all year round. Is it maybe that in the winter they're more likely to get deeper into the chest? No, they do infect all year round, but not as... In, in high numbers, if you look at this, 
the numbers for flu, it's clearly lower, but it's not zero in the summer months, right, Amy? Yeah, but it's not zero, but it has nothing to do with getting deeper into your chest. It has to get, it has to do with you being inside versus outside and stuff. Your environment is different. Well, it's, that's why we call it seasonal, right? It's seasonal for other, there's seasonal, there's actually weather and stuff, reasons for seasonality, like humidity, like plants has stuff and Peter has stuff about humidity. Okay, Vanity says, do you think the recent California patient will result in Delta 32 treatment in HIV patients who don't have leukemia? So we have um, two cases. With this, but this is the third person who had a stem cell Fifth. transplant to be free of HIV? Fifth person. Fifth person? A man from California through a stem cell transplant to, to treat leukemia. Yeah. And they, they gave him a transplant from a, Delta, a CCR5 Delta 32 donor. I don't think that this is going to be a successful way of treating HIV. Well, what if you could, what if you, no, I mean, they got transplants, right? Yeah, but this is the same idea that David had when I went to talk to him about being a postdoc, that you were going to harvest CD34 positive stem cells from people, from people and make two headed antibodies or, or potentially do that. Right. Problem yeah. is, is if you were to harvest, I believe that there is a pretend, I th- believe that there is a population of 34 positive stem cells that do carry HIV latent in them. So you would have to force out the reservoir. Oh, so you, you can't just take them out of the. No, but, but what if you, it's very hard to, tra- it's also, so the guy who got who went from Harvard to David's and then back to Harvard and then had to turn in all of his NIH money has now had to escape to France because of all the fraud that he committed in David's lab and in his graduate lab. It was his vector that David thought could transduce 34 positive stem cells and not be silenced. And that technology is just not good. Why don't we just cut out the, the, take out the, the uh, stem cells from the patient, CRISPR out the CCR5 and put them back in. Because of off target effects. That's basically what the Chinese guy tried to do. And then those kids have different defects. Yeah, but this Maybe is an adult. Have cancer. Right. This what is difference? Adult. Okay. So, so if I'm 15 and I get HIV because I have random sex or use a needle, it's that's fine. I didn't say that. I just said that the developmental effects may have been evident because they were no, done in they, utero, they also, right? They, that, but they also developed cancers and stuff. There wasn't just purely... I, don't, I think okay. that they had other side effects that were not just pure development. And, and you, you don't think we could deal with the off-target effects in no. some way? Okay. That's your answer yeah. from from Amy. I'm, I'm a little... Not, at least in, not at this point in time, no. Uh, what are types of tests are being developed to displace animal testing and virology? Do you use organoids and enterovirus research? You can. Unfortunately, people have used them improperly, but you can, sure. But it doesn't, it does, what, is, what, what question are we using the animals for? So you have to be very specific about what your animal design, what your study in animals is for. So you cannot use organoids to look at neurotropism and neuroinvasion and the potential of of paralysis due to vaccine lots. And there's no immune system basically in the organoid. So you can't look at how T cells and B cells move in and out of tissues and how that controls pathogenesis or not. So, and many times the organoids are also a loss of You know, your gut is completely innervated. The gut is known as the second brain, right? Isn't that Mike Gershon stuff? Mm -hmm. So there's no nerves and stuff. So, you know, not good. Not good. My, my, My first brain is in my gut. Did you know that? Oh, 
how come you're inverted from everybody else where their first print is in the head and you're in the gut? Why is that? Makes me a good communicator. Uh, I see. Not just a good eater. No. Okay. Got it. So do deer infected with SARS-CoV-2 pass it in their poop? Well, the, the study we did last week, yes. It's in poop and it's PCR positive. I don't know if it's infectious. Um, so, yeah, I, I, I think it's tough to know if it's inf infectious or not. you have any thoughts, Amy? I think it's tough to know if it's infectious. You have to do the assay. Yeah. yeah Just having the activity. RNA isn't going to talk to you. It's hard to keep your puppy away from it, right? Because they're running around the grass. They're going to eat poop. Yeah. Oh, this is puppy food now? Well, puppies, when you let dogs run around, they eat poop. They like to eat poop. Okay. I'll well, check yeah. with Wendy. Well, you I don't think have... Gardo eats poop, but I'll check with Wendy. Yeah, uh, our dogs will eat poop if you let them. Yeah. I'll okay. check with Wendy. All right. Gordo. Well, you don't believe me. Huh? I believe you. I'm just not sure that Gordo is a poop eating dog. He eats uh, chicken bones. Uh, any thoughts on, on the proposed connection between norovirus and Crohn's? Mm. Yeah, so there's a recent study that's right well you know i think any infection that it induces inflammation could be a risk factor in the right genetic background don't you think yeah for sure so yeah this is the first study to show this for norovirus but um I think we need to I think others. you have to be very careful because there's one about enteros from a woman who was at Harvard who's now at Moderna. She could never culture virus out. She could only say that there was RNA. So this was in a mouse model. You have to and be very careful. Common neuroinfection may block the production of a, 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 API 5, apoptosis inhibitor 5. Normally protects gut cells. And, but um, mouse nor is not the same as human nor. It's not. It's very different. It's, it's very Ken, different. Ken Cadwell. Yes, but it's very different. I'm not sure you can. I'm not sure you can say that that's going to correlate. That that has anything to do with human human disease and human virus. So they say the researchers also found that people with Crohn's had fewer API five producing T cells. And, and Cadwell said, this doesn't tell you it's due to a norovirus, but it gives you confidence that something happened to these patients that's similar to norovirus infection in mice. So you'd have to look in people, basically, because this is a mouse model. And I think... Well, but nor mouse noro is very different yeah, than human noro. It has different receptors. I believe that mouse noro, people think you can culture in B cells, and human noro, you cannot. Just got this lecture yesterday. Okay. Why are adenoviruses good vectors if loads of people have previously been infected? I'm not sure that they're good vectors. Well, you can use, there are a lot of serotypes, and you could also use non-human adenoviruses to avoid that serological issue there, John Wayne. <laughs> What do you think of John Wayne asking a question, uh, Amy? Very cool from the dead. I want to know more about the other side. <laughs> John says, my friend is <clears throat> C19 home test positive, has some immune issues. I told her Paxlovid is normally for over 50, but could benefit her. She got it within a couple of hours. Did I give her the best advice? Yes. Mm -hmm. You did, John. Good Probably going. got it. Have a listen, plan. Listening to Daniel, right? Have it a plan. <clears throat> John also wants to know how are self amplifying RNA vaccines controlled to not cause uh, adverse or overly strong immune reactions? Well, the, the mRNA vaccines we're using are not self amplifying, right, Amy? Right. But there is self amplifying RNA vaccines. 
They're all based on uh, Venezuelan equine fires by the guy in Alabama. That's right. So how do you cut, how do you stop them from over amplifying? They eventually do get cleared. Yeah, because they don't make particles, right? They're just delivered right. to cells, and then they amplify in the cells, make antigen, and then they don't make new virus particles. So that's the answer, correct? Right. right. Hmm. Welcome back, Amy. What impact does pollution have on the immune system? Not a good one. Not a big one? Not a good one. <laughs> no, which uh, pollution is supposed to be one of the causings of, uh, causes of hyperimmune activity, which then leads to things like asthma. And that's because what's the mechanism? They're constantly the 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 debris constantly stimulates the immune response, and so you lose tolerance, and you can't no longer really discriminate self. Okay. Um, what is immune imprinting as its importance in monovalent versus bivalent versus multivalent vaccines? Immune imprinting is some idiot's word for original antigenic sin, which means that you are you have primary addiction to the first antigen that you saw. And anything related to that first will preferentially induce a, a B cell response to the first antigen, right? Yes. And, and maybe once, you may not. And then once you Go get ahead. enough distant from that first antigen, then you make brand new B cells, right? Instead of yes. just reactivating the old ones, right? Yes. So what's the importance in monovalent versus bivalent versus multivalent? So in monovalent, if you're always given the same multi monovalent, it's what you want. It's a memory response, right? Yes. But if you have a bivalent, it would say an original and a new component, you may be just boosting the original preferentially. It depends yes. how, how different the, the second component is. You don't like uh, imprinting, Amy? The term? Yeah. No. It's just immune memory, right? Yes. Don't quote your doubt. Do not quote you that. I wasn't intending to. That's good. But what would what would I have quoted? I mean, I'm curious now. <laughs> he would just go, "Well, that's the way the immune system works." But yeah, it's kind of condescending, as though he thought like as like divine intervention occurred to him when he just read a what read Gabriel Victoria's paper, which kind of spewed it all out. Are you no, I'm not New a native New York. No. Where are you born? You're St. Louis. Outside St. Louis, yes. Great to see you, Amy. Hello, Steve. When and where is Twiv One Thousand? The Helen Mills Theater in New York City. April fifteenth. And we only have 130 places, so if you want to get in line, you send me an email, Vincent at Microbe TV, with. Subject line TWIV 1000. And maybe tomorrow, Amy, I should start making a list. What do you think? Yes, you make a list and there's a suggested donation to help us f fund the TWIV 1000 because, you know, it's a big project. It's, it's quite expensive, right? Quite expensive, but it's a big project. My hair fell out. Advisory Commission Committee on yeah. Immunization is meeting this. That's the CDC Advisory Committee as opposed to the the one for the FDA, Verbach. Yes, this one is the CDC. So they make recommendation for the booster schedule. We'll see if they're in harmony with the FDA. They committee. make guidelines for how to use the vaccines for safe guidelines. vaccine practices. Yes. Could both Amy and Vincent rate on a scale of one to 10 how WHO handled the pandemic? No. <laughs> you don't want to rate it? You can't. You're a government employee. You're not allowed to do that. 
Not only that, but I work with the WHO, so no, I don't want to do that. Can I do it? Be my guest. You're not me. Your opinion make no. Your opinion has no influence on me. I'm you have so, your opinion. I'm so I'm sad on. by that comment. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I'm just teasing. Yeah. Well, in this in this uh, question, it doesn't. You're right. How do they do on a scale of one to ten? I mean, minus forty six. So I did, did a lot of the things that I didn't agree with. You know, they all they messed with transmissibility, which we talked about years ago. So I would give them a six. Wow, that's very generous. Yeah, because I think they help mobilize resources for nations that need help. I, I think that's important. Right, because Seppi just showed that, like, there was a whole big thing about how they didn't do anything for globalization, just dis global distribution. They did less than what was desired for global distribution of vaccines, such that Seppi is shutting down its stuff, and it's now just going to give the SARS-CoV-2 vaccine to anybody who comes to the clinic for regular vaccination. They're not, like, actually going out and setting up vaccine clinics. All right, I'll lower it to five. How's that? That's now more you, reasonable. You can't say anything because you're conflicted. I know. Right. But I just wanted to point out the little tidbit about global vaccination because, you know, that's a pet peeve. I understand. Why did unvaccinated have higher death rates from COVID than vaccinated and boosted? Of course. They have no immunity. Yeah, they have no chance to to catch up, as Amy said earlier, right? In a healthy person, the immune system can catch up and limit infection and, and disease, limit disease, not infection. But if you have a poor immune system, you can't. And those are the people who die, the very young and the very old. So if you're vaccinated, you're ready to do that. Uh, should researchers consider changing their COVID vaccine strategy to include more B and T cell epitopes. I think they are. I think they are doing that, but I'm not sure that it's, it's going to make the, the result that you would like, right, to make severity to the level of common cold coronas. What do you think, Amy? Uh, what do you mean severity of the common cold coronas? I think yeah, common mild, cold coronas have mild. been, yeah, but I think that they've been circulating for way longer, right? So uh, that, that's the problem. They, that's why they're mild, right? Because they've been circulating right. with so much population immunity, right? Exactly. So I think that the, I think you have to wait a long time for that kind of thing for these these kind of viruses for SARS-CoV-2. We've we've entered the 400s tonight and we have 300 likes. Please hit the like button, folks. That's great. It's good. <laughs> it's a joy to have Amy back. Thank you. Do you like when people are happy to see you? I like when people appreciate others and are not trolling moderators who uh, overstep their boundaries and stuff. So. What's this uh, next question? And here? you should just appreciate the person. You don't need to change the person to make it so that they conform to your ideal because that's not right. I think that this might be the monoclonal antibody that causes bleeding in the brain, and that is not good at all. So this was just approved in January by the FDA for early Alzheimer's. Oh, so it's not the antibody that causes the bleeding in the brain? I don't believe so. Oh, okay. It was just approved in January, so... Yeah, but they also approved a drug that didn't really do anything. That was very controversial. Of course, this is out of our lane, Amy. Yeah, this is not good. Are you asking what our favorite Baltimore class of virus is? Seriously? Of course it's 
single stranded RNA viruses. I mean, my God, this plus is plus RNA, like, right? Ridic- right? Yes. yes. And not just plus, not the retroviruses, just plus RNA. Plus single stranded RNA viruses, yes. What, what, um, retrovirus is a separate category. Let's They're let's get retrovirus. the let's get the actual Baltimore class number. I'm going to pull up my lectures. I believe here. it's class four. This is class four. I think so. Class three, or class four. I think. Well, I pulled up infectious cycle, so that's I need to get lecture three, which would be genomes and uh. genetics. You know, folks, there's a bunch of virology lectures on youtube you should watch baltimore class four you're right yes got it you have a great memory Uh, do you think it's going to decline as you age or are you going to be one of those people that remain sharp as a tack as you age i don't know my grandmother was 101 it was very sharp there you go Looks looking good for you. You're pretty young, though. What are you, like 32? No, I'm four. Do you miss New York City? Yes. What do you miss about it? Lots of things. Food, museums. I'll Central reformulate Park. the question. Oh, I, I answered it. I, there's a, a 1980s paper from Bill Robinson that said, yes, there's a cellular protein kinase in the virus particle. But I don't think it's been worked on since then. That's all. Um, babies are dying and there's no rules. So if you're carrying the virus, you can still go to work. It doesn't make sense to me. Well, it depends on how many people are vaccinated, right? Maybe the, the assumption is if, if enough people are vaccinated, then that should be good enough to um, say no well, more testing. The truth of the it. matter is is that there was, a, there was, what did Daniel say last week, that there have been over a 1,000 deaths of children under the age of six from influenza. We don't walk around for our mask with influenza. And all of those children, the parents didn't vaccinate. And these children... Children up and and above six months old can all be vaccinated. And if the mother was vaccinated in the third trimester, they're at least protected by maternal antibodies to the virus until they're six months old. So why aren't you vaccinating? Yes, you should be vaccinated against flu and against SARS-CoV-2 for sure. Well, that's what Daniel said. Yeah, he's right. Elise is an artist and wants to make drawings of viruses, what would you recommend? <clears throat> EV-68. Um, Although I do have a beautiful EV-68 from that, from Jen. So I might have to take that back. So and I might we... have to think of a new, a new enter that I would like. Because Jen made me beautiful 68. Um, if, if you want to look at pictures of viruses, um, I would... Let's put this up on the um, screen share. What do you th- What do you say? Can we do a screen share? Sure. I would suggest. But that's David and... Goodsell stuff, right? Well, that's another one, but this is one that I like. Dave, uh, this is Viral Zone, and you can browse by the Baltimore category, or you can br- browse by the Virion. And let's pick. Um, we gotta go for the Enteros. Let's go to the Enteros. We'll go to Single Stranded Plus. RNAs, and we will go to uh, picornaviridae. Can you see that? And then you get a nice drawing of the particle. Yeah. Uh, So you could do echoes and rhinos. But these are all going to look. These are all going to look the same. I mean, they have. If if you want to look at the real um, structures, you need to go to what is that one? Viper database, right? Viper. Viper DB, here we go, um, and Virus Particle Explorer, and then you're going to get the three dimensional. So let's look at structure. So top of the do- list is Picornis. Oh, look at number that. two. So how do I get in here? Oh, 
that's just a breakdown. So let's go to find a virus, EV D68. How about that? No results. Enterovirus. <laughs> okay, enterovirus D68. Don't tell me there's no results. Oh, come on. Can you believe this, Amy? How about enterovirus? It's broken. It's so broken. The internet is broken. Title virus name. That's why, because I've been doing the wrong enterovirus D68. I've been putting the wrong thing there. It's not actually broken. Here we go. It's crystal structure of human entero D68. So we click on it and we get a picture. And you can do, um, I'm sure you can do you space can filling. It. Yeah. So you could do, yeah, here we go. There's your structures yeah, there. Yeah, that's 68. You can tell. Yeah. Anyway, so that's Viper DB. Those two resources I would uh, uh, think about. And then if you want, you could do David Goodsell viruses. And you could get, um, here, for example, coronavirus. This is the kind of illustration he makes, you know, these kind of flat images of different viruses. So he's done a bunch, and you could just search for him. Okay. That's cool. Thank you for that, um, Elise. Yeah, that's good. Hey, is Masa? Yeah, she's coming to the she's coming to the to the one thousandth episode of Twitch. Well, she she sent a, an email, and I, we have to see where she is on the list, right? Because I haven't made a list. She and her husband are coming, Vincent. What's your general view on the mRNA vaccine technology, considering the rising interest by pharma companies? And me and I have different views. Yes, we do. Give us your view. They might have maxed it out already. Amy doesn't think it'll work for everything. No, is that put, it's is not that putting work words for everything. In, it's not putting. It's not going to work for everything at all. That's true. And it has significant toxicity and drawbacks when you do too many things. It's not perfect yet. And I think it also has to, I also think that one of the reasons why we're, we, the antibody response is transient is due to the fact that it bypasses the role of innate immunity and priming the immune system and maintaining things because they've taken all of that out by using pseudouridines. I think it has some potentials that need to be explored. For example, the 20 HA mRNA vaccine of, of um, what was his not name? Going anywhere. Scott Hensley. Scott Hensley. Why do you say it's not going anywhere? Do you have inside not information? Going anywhere. It's not going anywhere. All right, I think it's going somewhere. Amy doesn't, that's fine, we can, we can disagree. I think more work needs to be done. It's like the idea of making one like that for Rhino for 160 isolates of Rhino. Not going to happen. Look at the guy who came out of Spin Spindler's lab, who had that company who made, who thought he made a vaccine of 40 valent for rhinovirus. You got some kind of transient antibody response when you stuck the mouse with 40 rhinoviruses all at the same time. It went nowhere. Okay, let's move on. Argentina and Uruguay declared national health emergencies due to avian flu. Mammals in Spain, sea lions, are we in for it? No, I don't think so. As, as, as our friend in Brazil forgot his name, he said, because we're watching, it's not going to happen. <laughs> It's a little concerning. No, actually, right? it's becoming, according to the lady I heard speak on Monday, it's be, this is the demonstration of the virus becoming endemic in our areas. In birds. Mm -hmm. So it could be that if we have so many local bird infections, the likelihood of a spillover increases. I just don't know. I think infecting mammals, to me, is more concerning. I never was concerned about H5N1. I mean, there's less than a thousand human cases, or less than a thousand human deaths, never transmission. So, but who knows? I don't know. I'm not sure it's spreading through the mammals, is it? 
Uh, there was some suggestion in the minks that it did spread from mink to mink, yeah. Do you think well, everyone... minks are also housed in that, in, in like a chicken coop? Sure, sure. Very close quarters. It's kinda, yeah. yeah, it's kind of hard to know. Yes, yeah, so everyone will eventually get infected with SARS CoV 2. Apparently, not Amy. Actually, you might. I have. converted. Just... I was going to say I Sarah converted very early. I probably was infected. I just didn't develop symptoms, huh. or whatever symptoms I developed, I didn't really focus on. I just kept going. Shocking. Good to see you together again. Could you get Christopher Murray in to explain how he estimates the global burden of disease? Check YouTube of him at the Berkeley Recent. All right, I'll look into it. Where is the PSA going to be shown? Everywhere. <laughs> uh, I'm sure it'll be everywhere. YouTube, all the social media will link to it. And, and I don't know where else, but yeah. Here's a good one. Nothing true is popular and nothing popular is true. <laughs> I like that, Ben. Who said that? It's good. Can, can, um, I have to write it down. I'll remember it. All right. Here's a question for Amy. Does Novavax um, give longer lasting T cell and broader immunity than the mRNA vaccines? Uh, I think it's on par. I don't know about longer lasting, right? Because just as, as Daniela Weisskopf said, it's hard to know about durability of T cell responses because people are just getting infected all the time. You right. can't control that. But I don't think it does any broader immunity than mRNA vaccines. No, not at all. So, so John, who asked us for our favorite Baltimore class, says he is a single-stranded DNA virus person oh so he's like a sv40 guy single stranded no parvovirus oh parvovirus so would that be class one uh, it was, was double strand class? let me look at my baltimore scheme yeah class two are the single stranded dna viruses favorite immune evasion strategy these are questions for like twiv 1000 i like that yeah to ask the participants so a bunch of different random virus questions. What do you think about that, Amy? That'd be fun. Yeah, I like that. That was going to be a Jeopardy. Yeah, I think there could be a Jeopardy. Yeah, but we need something else. Well, by the time you introduce all nine of them, and then you ask them why they think why they joined Twib and why they think it's important and blah blah blah, it's like forty five minutes. Then if you do a Jeopardy, it could take up the entire rest of the time. My God, I'm not sitting there for more than an hour and a half, Bob. No, no, it's an hour and a half max. No problem. We have to be out of there by 830. Otherwise, we pay $500 for every half hour we stay over. That's expensive, Bob. Oh, the whole thing is bloody expensive. I'm not doing it again. That's for sure. Really? Well, what would be the other occasion? To do it 20 again. years of TWIF? 25 years of TWIF? I, what I want to do is go to a theater every week and do a talk show like they do with the guys, the comedy guys at 11 p.m. I just want to do it about viruses or maybe infectious diseases and have four guests come on and they can all stay there as the other one comes on. What do you, what do you think about that? What do you that? think? You're Johnny Carson of viruses? Yeah, that's what I want. I'm not funny though. I know. <laughs> well, Johnny Carson did have Ed McMahon. Dixon can be Ed, my Ed McMahon, and we can have Dixon's nephew as the band. Okay. The quartet. Except you and Dixon not that funny together. Really? Not as funny as you and I. Well, you, what you, do you could think? be. You could be my Ed Edwina. McMahon, except that you work Edwina? in another city. Edwina? Yeah, a woman. A Edwina? Woman. <laughs> Edwina? You named your, your Edwina? Ay, ay, ay. He's trying to make a female name out of Ed McMahon. I okay? know. I just, yeah, but, I know. But you're too far away, so that's not going to work. All right. What's my favorite immune evasion strategy? Um, 
I like um, <laughs> I like these uh, viruses that so NK cell killing. They, they many viruses downregulate MHC, and so the NK cell looks at the cell and says, "Up, oh, there's no MHC here. It's probably virus infected, and kills it." So some viruses put like herpes, and they put up an MHC SARS back up. They, they put a fake MHC up that will not do antigen presentation, but it will look oh. like an MHC to the NK cell. And so the NK cells, oh, we're all good here. Move on. That's my favorite. Good. What about yours? <laughs> mm. Amy? I don't really have a favorite. We have now 454 participants. 454 sequencing, Amy. I know. First 454. The first Very difficult. high throughput sequencing developed, right? Yes. And it was because the guy had a daughter who he wanted to, to do her genome because she had some disease. So he developed this method for high throughput and it became commercialized. Yes, he also did the iron torrent. It's the same guy. It's, John says you're as funny as Ed McMahon 100%. I am funny. You just don't appreciate me. Can we get Vincent as Karnak the Magnificent? <laughs> yeah, you need Karnak. You need the envelope. You need so, to talk I to would the love, envelope. Maybe once a month I could do a show, you know, in a theater with an audience and just bring people up. And, you know, they they could they don't have to be serious. They could be a little funny. We could get, you know, Harold Varmus up and he could talk about his bicycle stuff, right? It could be funny-ish. Funny-ish? Well, look, funny-ish? They get, they get, they get Is that actors, a word? Right? Funny-ish? They get actors and they say, how's your new movie? Oh, it's this and that. And they talk about behind the scenes stuff. So we could get Harold up. How's your new paper going? He said, oh, you should have seen this postdoc. They were doing this experiment. They dropped it on the ground. It was a mess. That kind of stuff. You know what I'm, don't you think that would be interesting? No. All right. Forget I it. I do, but I just don't know. I, I, I do think it's interesting. But behind the I scenes, that, I don't think you can have high power people to give you hype to have that. You have to have the people in the lab. They have to be graduate students and postdocs who are actually doing the work. Yeah, we could do that too. We could bring the students in and we could not just New York. We could bring them in from Boston and Philadelphia. We could have our limo go pick you them up. You could just move to Philadelphia, Boston and take it on the road. Now, these shows based in New York, people come to them. They're based in L.A., Snuck Bumps. The Johnny Tonight Show has been in L.A. for, like, years. Yeah, but it wasn't before. It used to be in New York. Yeah, what about the, the guy with the red the hair? Eye. What's his name, the guy with the red hair? Conan O'Brien is off. Oh, see, I don't know anything. I should probably do some research, right? Yeah, I would think so. But, hey, what do I know? Yeah, so Dixon's uh, nephew is the Randy... They pull me a quartet. They will play while you people are coming in the theater. And then after when you're leaving, and then they'll come to the um, incubator afterwards to play as well. Okay, back to science. I understand that mRNA tech has been around a while. Is SARS-CoV-2 the first use of the vaccine for the public? Yeah, yes. It's the first, first licensed vaccines, right? Yep. Does it enable faster development? Yeah, it does. It does. Right, right, Amy? Mm -hmm. That's and, and the theory. Scott Hensley said, you know, we have a pandemic, a flu pandemic. We could make a mRNA vaccine within a month, really quickly. How long do mRNA vaccines protect against severe disease? At least a few years, right, Amy? Yeah, seems so. And as each year goes by, we'll see because there will be people who have just had the original th three vaccines, like Amy, and we'll see how they do with severe disease. Always delighted to see Amy. It's great to see Amy and Vincent together. That's cool. Love the Prince Purple. Is that Prince Purple? Yes. Paisley Park. A number of years ago, uh, Amy and I went to an ASV in, what was it, Minneapolis, right? Yeah. 
which is where Prince and the hotel had pictures of him all over the place. Remember? Yes. It also had Bonnie Anderson. I don't know why that was she from Minneapolis. She's from Minnesota, I think. Has anyone discovered a link between the mRNA vaccines and polymyalgia rheumatica? No. No, but, you know, things happen between you getting a vaccine and, and uh, you know, things happen, I should say. When you get a vaccine, things were going to happen that were going to happen anyway. So you have to be very careful and you have to observe it in multiple people. And I'm not aware of that, as Amy has said. No. It's uh, like asking just because I got a vaccine and I pulled out of that parking lot that the car accident that I had was due to the vaccine. Who's the professor from Texas with the last name of H? Oh, Hotez. <laughs> That's funny. I won't read it. Okay. He said you're smarter than the professor from Texas. He has a publicity machine. I don't need a publicity machine. I am your publicity machine. Okay. Well, get to it then. Did you see that? Yeah, this thing in Idaho, Bill in Idaho would make mRNA based vaccination a crime. That's ridiculous. A yeah, vaccine not good plan. that has saved so many lives. We're going to make it a crime. This is the problem with ignorance. It won't happen. Don't worry about it. You uh, can never yes. tell. Some states are, are, some states are, are totally crazy. And Amy is back. They have great shopping in that area. Not like New York City, but close. I'll have a great stylist by Dulles if you need one. Not saying you do, but hair is important. <laughs> Thank you very much. I do realize that hair is important because everybody likes to write in and say my hair is in chaos. And it is. And I like the stylist that I have in Potomac. He is very good. I just don't always go as frequently as I should. I'm not so good at the going well you went to a fundraiser last week and you were all dewed up right yeah but then i did my own hair and then it was raining and it got wet and it became a hair pod do you want me to show the picture <laughs> would you like from to the share? frizz do you sure you can see everybody can see the frizz everybody right. needs to know what frizz looks like just because uh, you stick your, your finger in the electric socket so, so Amy went to a thing in, where was it? Falls Church? McLean. Oh, McLean. I don't know. What do I know? And, and she had to I get I don't even know up. where Falls Church is. I think well, it's I in Virginia. Well, I got pseudo dolled up. I think it's in Virginia. I got pseudo dolled up. Yes. Let me see if I can find this thing. So you text me so much. It's unbelievable. Here it is. Open you know it. what? I no longer text you no more. I'm done. Hold on, <laughs> hold on. You complain? No more text for you. Hold on. Here's a picture, which is uh, Amy. Let me see. How do I do this? Screen share. Here we go. There's Amy with a dog. Yeah, and look, the hair is, is very non-chaotic, right? It's got frizz. Depends on what you think is chaotic or not. There's some frizz. This is an interesting table here, Amy. Yeah, it's her uh, vestibule area. What's kind yeah, of dog? Is, what kind of dog is that? Cockapoo. She has two cockapoos. cockapoos. One is white, and yeah, one is white, and one is that's the other one. It's very what nice. Was, what's the biggest mistake government made in the pandemic, in your opinion? Go for it. Uh, not testing, not developing a test very early on, and not recommending masking. Yes, everybody had an opinion. Oh, this is great. Polio Pete. I have to get Why to this. Polio we... Pete? Oh, he's just got a great, not not so late night with Vince Arachaniel. It's a nice guest. Spike Lee, Spike Jones, and Spike Protein. That is fabulous. Cool. Fabulous. Cool. No, nobody would pay for it. I'll have to start it at the incubator. Of I have to get would. Harold Varmus. I'll get a, I have to make a nice desk, like a Johnny Carson desk. And a bench okay. next to it. And then 
start small and then build up. I only have 20 okay. years because, you know, I don't have a whole lot of years left. <laughs> well, you better get cracking then. Yeah, I better get cracking, yeah. Better get cracking. How, how common do you think uh, asymptomatic infection is for COVID? More than half. Really? More than half? Not 20% like was the early estimate? No? More than half. Okay. More than half. Huh. How about that? Yep. So Amy thinks it's quite high. I would say 20 to 40%, but that's close. Yep. Way more than half. Say, great to have you together again. It's cool. Thank you. It's good. If you had to get rid of CD8 cells or antibodies, which would you pick? Um, oh, crap. I just broke my spike. How'd you break it? I've been futzing with it. Well, who told you to do that? You know, when I have something in my hand, I just play with it and I broke it. So I have to find the piece I, later and glue it on. Anyway, which which would well, you Well, it should be of? easy to find after I vacuumed all the dead stink bugs and I made a little <laughs> thingy there for you. It should be very easy to find. Because now there's nothing on the floor behind you, not even dead stink bugs. What would you get? What would you dispense of? CD8s or antibodies? <sighs> I know what I'd dispense of. Okay, what would you? Antibodies. Dispense? You know, yeah. the most common immunodeficiency is IgA, and these people don't have any more mucosal infections than anybody else so doesn't I'm, say that they don't but that's the wrong interpretation of the data because you didn't ask you tell the right questions and you tell, didn't tell you the right story he gave you his spiel and his agenda it doesn't say that when they get an infection so they don't get more in fact they don't get no they don't get an increased number of infections how do you know that the disease is the same it's not more severe or for longer yeah, absolutely right i still pick antibodies what do you pick Nothing. You don't want to have a pick, okay? Yeah, I don't need to have a pick. Are you aware of any attempts Am to harm? Am I aware? <laughs> to Am I aware viral, of what? <laughs> viral evolution. Seems like a good way to search a problem space if you can set the fitness function properly. Well, that's the key, right? I mean, we're trying to understand. I'm aware of virus. I'm aware of virus evolution. Have you are aware of any attempts to harness it? That's all. Harness? Yeah, harness evolution. How are you going to harness evolution? You think you're going to harness Mother Nature? <laughs> it's like harnessing a horse. It's easy. You put a rope and you you got it. And you sit on it and you ride it. To okay, well, let me know how that works out for you. No, I understand what he's, he or she is saying is that you want to somehow use it. It's You, you say you, you make an, an antiviral that pushes the virus to the extinction level of mutagenesis. How about that? That's harnessing evolution. Never going to happen. Isn't that remdesivir? I'm sorry, no, I'm ribavirin. you got to escape mutants of ribavirin very easily. Yeah. I and think then the and then when you remove the drug, the alteration goes back to wild type. G64S is not stable. So this is this is an example of harnessing evolution, though. But the, the the key here, you're right. The fitness function setting it, we just don't know what it would be because we don't have a clue what what is the right fitness for a virus, what controls it, and so forth. And until we have that, you'd you have can't... to you you as you if I were to say to you uh, about NOPV, right? You and they say it's non neurovirulent. What do you say? You say, put it in a million, you say, you would say, put it in a million guts and wait, and you guarantee that the virus will figure out a way to go back to wild tape fitness. Yes. So. That's right. Right. So how is that any different than this? Oh, I agree. Okay. Just saying, those were my ideas. Okay. Trillion says. What immune factor induces rabies protection in bats? Well, Amy sent me a paper today that may enable us to answer this question, right? Yeah, the bat cell paper. They made induced pluripotent stem cells from bats. Adult bats. And now they can and now they can say what protects them from some virus infections because we don't know. 
We have no idea. It's a good question. We'd like to know, right? Yep. Although they do have like 18,000. Excuse me. If you're a gate. You're getting tired, Amy? Stuff. Yeah. Getting, Sorry. But don't done. they have like a ton of, don't they have a ton of interference genes that we don't have to? Isn't that Karen Mossman from Toronto's work? That's right. That's right. Um, do you think it might be possible for uh, things other than retroviruses to get into chromosomes? Yes, pieces of other viral genomes get in. But Doesn't uh, AAV integrate? AAV can integrate. Pieces of other genomes, viral genomes are found in animal genomes. Mostly not functional, though. But yes, that can happen. Uh, mm -hmm. Amy, do you do you like this kind of bagel? Lox, cream cheese, tomato, red onion on a toasted bialy. A bialy is not a bagel. Yeah, yeah, I know. I may I misspoke. Sorry. Do you like it? Uh, I don't eat cream cheese because it makes me sick. But other than that, it would be very yummy. But it is not a bagel. A bialy is not a bagel. It's from bialy stock in Poland. It's like bagel dough without a hole, but then filled with caramelized onions. You know, okay. my sister went to Bialy Stock for a year. What'd she do there? Probably teach, teach America. She taught them English. For, my, for HIV patients, I have in my notes that the CD4-8 ratio is important because CD8 shows little diurnal variation and is subject to few lab errors. <clears throat> I've heard that as well. And there's a virologist, I think it's in Madison, who made a big deal out of that as well. But I don't know the details and I don't know anything else. I don't know. This is a question for Daniel because he's a, he treats AIDS patients, right? Mm -hmm. New paper from Cromer Lab. Inactivated Newcastle disease virus spike COVID vaccine elicits a higher proportion of neutralizing antibodies in humans than mRNA vaccination. Well, good luck because I don't... Well, don't let's think just put it to you this far. way. He had to kind of, they, he and Polizzi had to kind of massage the numbers. Because really there was no difference and then they had to kind of massage the numbers. Who is monitoring the presence of H5N1 in the larger wild bird population? I don't know. Do you? Uh, the woman I talk, the woman I heard on Monday, uh, she, it, the USDA surveys a lot of birds mm -hmm. and stuff. And, um, yeah, they're in charge of a lot of animals, even though they're not part of the food chain because of the way, yeah. Tanya Bro Shropshire, thank you for your contribution to science communication. And I don't, I'll never forget what you said. I tell it to my classes. There are two kinds of knowledge, the kind you carry in your head and the kind you have to look up, and both are useful. I love That's it. That's great. Isn't that great? It is good. Could a commercial chicken egg being sold carry H5N1? And if so, would cooking until well done kill so it's not it's not transmitted it's not vertically transmitted and yes cooking it well done would kill it yeah you bet but it's not vertically transmitted no it is not boo is miss seeing us once a week well i'm glad you like us good the question regarding deer in the prion study where deer poop may contain prions so are extra precautions needed when cleaning up deer poop in the yard? Well, there's no evidence that deer prions infect people. Yeah. But you should still be careful, right? If you're going to clean it up, don't aerosolize it, right? Is there any chance a mutation in a positive sense single-strand RNA virus if, if I passage them one or twice? <laughs> there's always mutations. Yeah, every pass you're going to get mutations for sure. Absolutely. Yes, you will get 
at each passage, and Amy will document that for you. So they're saying in Canada, eggs are not more expensive. I don't know. All right, look at this one, Amy. What would you say to this? Well, gonna... so according to the woman that I heard on Monday, and her map, avian flu starts at the Canadian-U.S. border in the late summer. Right. Like Montana. And then it goes south during the winter to the Mississippi Valley. And then as the birds go back to Montana, it remains in the Mississippi Valley. She didn't say anything about it really being a problem in the Canadian bird population. But it I'm might surprised. be too hot. It might be too cold. It might be too cold and stuff for it up there. I don't know. Might be different birds. So, should you should allow kids to play with duck feathers? Why not? Yeah, I, I don't see a problem with that. I missed you, Amy. I am part of the fan club. That's great, Gabriel. Thank you for your contribution to science communication. That's fantastic. We're almost at the, the watchers. We have 384 likes and 417 watchers. That's great. Good. Spaz, thank you for your contribution to science communication. Really appreciate it. Lots of deer chat. With the majority of people who died from age five fall in a certain age group, elderly, elderly, no pattern. No. There are many young people who take care of poultry, for example. So there's no pattern as far as I know. I see there's a Noir LeBlanc. I see there's a chicken leukemia virus. Could there be a human leukemia virus we just don't know about yet? Well, there is human T lymphotropic virus. And that's the one we know of. Could there be one we don't know of? I mean, do you think we're pretty good at knowing all the viruses in humans by now? Hmm? Uh, I don't know. I mean, you can never roll out one occurring, right? I suppose. Anyway, HTLV-1 okay. causes uh, adult T-cell leukemia, lymphoma. All right, we're going to start wrapping down here. It's eight minutes left. A lot of deer chat, Amy. Yeah, deer chat is good. Thoughts on whether college COVID vaccine mandates will continue? I think they will. Uh, but there are some organizations that no longer mandate vaccination, right? And they have, for example, theaters no, are not always... Yeah. Mandated you don't have to show events. your you don't have to show your vaccine card anymore. That is yeah. true. I missed Amy. Brittany missed you. Ah, oh, that's really nice. Ro missed you. You're awesome. Yeah, that's really nice. Your natural mm -hmm. shtick reminds me of the Odd Couple, but you're both Oscar and Felix. How could I be Oscar and Felix at the same time? I didn't know we had a shtick, Amy. Of course we have a shtick. Okay, here's one for you. Any advice for virology students? Take Vincent's course. Watch it, learn it, take it. Buy the book. <laughs> yeah, watch my then, then, course then and read the we book. Can, then we can talk about what to do next. Um, John, thank you for your contribution to science communication. Will there be free toasted bagels at TWIV 1000? Oh, no, it's Saturday tea? night. It's Saturday night. No breakfast foods. <laughs> Saturday night. Bre Those are breakfast foods on Sunday brunch when you're hungover. You get toasted bagels and rugula and tea and lox and cream cheese, white fish. Sturgeon, sable. 
Pickles Herring. I saw the original series was updated to be bivalent. Are you all getting it now? I missed Amy. No, we are not getting it now. We don't uh, need to get it. We don't need to get it because it will give you three months of protection, and we don't feel we need that. Um, it Good. doesn't. It gives you a boost in antibodies. Okay, it doesn't harm you. It gives you a boost in antibodies. The antibodies are pretty much the same, but you're boosted, and that's going to give you a short-term protection. Um, have you ever been to London or Paris, Amy? No. So nice to see Amy. It's nice to see Gladys. And <laughs> well, you're not really seeing her, right? Cochrane study referenced in the Times Sun says no evidence for or against. It doesn't really say that. It says the methods are all flawed, essentially because it's hard to do the studies. But there are studies that show that they work, that are not flawed. And so um, wear the mask if, if you need protection. Do I ed offer any educational resources for veterinary viruses? I guess that's a short That's Angela. Right? Well, Angela's on TWIV, and she's a veterinary virologist, but... I don't offer any resources. No, sorry. Maybe I should, Amy. Okay. But what fundamental principle is different? Well, that's a good point. There isn't, but animals are different from people. That's all. The way but you teach fundamental principles. Do dogs and cats not have antibodies and T cells? Yeah, the same principles. You're right. The way animals transmit can be slightly different from people, right? Why? Right. We cough and we poop. I'm not going to win this one. Okay. Never mind. <laughs> no veterinary <laughs> virology. <laughs> it's just not clear. It's not no a winning competition. I just don't understand. You know, I mean, except that we use a toilet and the, well, I guess the kitty litter box is theoretically the cat toilet. Move on. Would I eat virus shaped pasta? Yes. I so would. I love pasta. Yeah. All right. <laughs> I would eat virus-shaped pasta. The question is, which virus would it be? Picornis. Here's the polio peak quote. Not so late night with Vincent Racaniel. I could start at 11, don't you? Is that when the Carson shows, these late night shows begin, Mamie? 11.30. What did you do? You cut yourself? Put your hair in front of it. No, nobody can see it. There you go. <laughs> I'll Apparently let you go I now. Did. We have three minutes. Late night with Vincent Racaniello. Tonight's guest, Spike Lee, Spike Jones, and Spike Protein. Polio, man, you're great. I love it. I really do like that. It's good. False Church, is that where you were? No, no McLean. You're well, she said Falls Church is close to McLean. Well, I don't know. This was exit 44 off of nine, 495. That's all I know. Falls Church has your naval attorneys. Remember J.A.G. from an Indian TV watcher. Oh, yes. Yes, I remember J.A.G. That was the precursor of uh, uh, the, 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 the crime show with... Oh, what was it? What's the name of that thing with with the the lady scientist, the crazy black haired lady scientist? Remember? You don't you don't How know this? I possibly remember. I never watch. <sighs> J A G. <sighs> Judge Advocate General. I thought that was the precursor to the other N C I S. There you go, N C I S with the uh, NCIS with the lady who used to do all the lab stuff. What was her name? Paulie Perrette, a Abby Shuto. Okay. She loved her science. Yeah. <laughs> and Jag, I thought Jag was a precursor to that. Maybe I'm wrong. Anyway, Ben, thank you for your thought, for your contribution to science communication as, and Daniel s summarized this, Cochrane report, which just said that it, they didn't say masks don't work. They just said it's very hard to make a good study about masks. Okay. All right. Let's go down and see who else contributed. Then we'll say good night. Uh, thank you, Ian, for your contribution. How do different cells have different 
CDs on them. Oh, the CD is just a, a name for a, a protein on the surface of a cell that can be you know, looked at by flow cytometry using antibodies. And they're cell type specific. Yeah, they have you know, the genes cell turned type on. Specific promoters that turn the, them on the, and turn them off. The genes are on in some cells and off. All of transcriptional regulation. That's all it is. Yeah. We should have there special edition Twiv One Thousand T-shirts. Yes. Well, think about it. We're not uh, committing. Well, we'll think, think about it. it. We have a good design. Maybe we should. Um... Yeah, this woman, Markle Mont, told you exactly what's in the tick tubes. Look up it's the tick tubes. Toilet ball. paper with cotton ball soaked with permethrin, right? Yes. And mice take the cotton for nesting and it repels or kick, yeah. kick, kill sticks. Very good. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I've heard of those. Very good. All right. That's Thanks, everybody, for said. coming. We uh, got to the mid 400s. 400 likes, so that's great. Uh, Amy, thank you for coming tonight. Appreciate yeah, it. Good. See you next month. I want to thank the okay. moderators. Let's see. We had Vanity. We had Barb Mack. We had PDK. We had Andrew. We had Frank. I believe uh, good. Vanity. Yeah, I got them all. Thank you all for moderating tonight. It's a good crowd tonight. Thanks, everybody, for coming. Um, and so we'll, we'll do this Q&A once a month. And uh, I, next week I'll return uh, with office hours. Uh, and I uh, will have a special guest, which you'll find out sometime uh, this weekend. Thanks, everybody, for joining. Be safe. Amy's gone. It's the shadow of Amy. <laughs> I better not go on for another hour. She'll get mad. Thanks, everybody. See you next time. Good night. <laughs>